Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to go over some more 3D printing basics. We're going to go over basic terminology of what all the parts of a 3D printer are so that you know what people are saying when they use a term you're not familiar with. Um, sorry for the lack of a live stream today. The guys haven't been out to work on the shed for almost two weeks and they came out today so I'm going to spend the whole day out there with them and get as much done as we can. They say we should be able to get the last two walls up and the roof up today which would be wonderful. <laughs> so. Stay tuned. So here we have a 3D printer. This happens to be an Ender 2. All of these parts are going to be the same pretty much no matter what printer you're using. So first we have the basic structure, your three axes. This is your Z axis, this is your X axis, and this is your Y axis. This is your printer's base, of course. This is your vertical rail or gantry and or z-axis rail. This is the brain box. So inside of here is the brain board, um, like a motherboard. So that's the, the computer that runs the entire printer. Some printers, this will be built in like this, and some printers, this will be an external component attached with a tether. This is your power supply. This one uses an external power supply. Some printers will have an internal power supply where it's built into the structure of the printer. This is your um, control knob, also called an encoder. This allows you to navigate the menu on your LCD screen, power switch, SD card, and USB interface. So this Y-axis, <coughs> this is your pulley. This is also your tensioner. So on this particular machine, I can loosen these bolts here, pull this out to make this belt tighter or looser as needed. In the back here, you have your stepper motor. This stepper motor also has a stepper damper, which makes this a little quieter. This is your drive belt. This is actually your motion system, so as you saw in my last video or video ago, um, you have guidance and you have motion. So this rail, your Y-axis rail, is the guidance system, and this belt is your motion system, which drives the bed back and forth. This is an end-stop switch, so this is your Y-axis end-stop. Remember, printers are dumb, deaf, and blind. They have no knowledge of their surroundings, so you have to tell it. That tells the printer stop when you press the button so it knows that's my zero point for the y-axis your other axes have the same thing the frame of the z-axis here your z-axis carriage presses this switch to tell it when to stop when coming down you can adjust this and also adjust the bed up and down so that the nozzle stops at the same point it needs to over the bed that's how you zero the printer get your offset correct and then adjusting the difference these are your bed leveling springs and your hard points. So you adjust these knobs to raise each of those points up or down to level or more correctly tram the bed. It's called tramming. This motion back and forth and this motion back and forth forms a virtual plane. You have to align this virtual plane with this physical plane. You do that by controlling the Z-axis limit switch, the height of the bed, and the differential between this, that, and this level screw. There's three of them there, two on that side, one over here. And by adjusting those, you will change the leveling of that plane, the tramming of that plane. And when you align this physical plane with this virtual plane, then your nozzle will be above the bed at the same distance everywhere it goes and that's your ultimate goal this is the y-axis carriage so this plate is what is attached to this motion system and what is also attached to this guidance system using these palm wheels so these wheels here ride within the v-slot groove of the printer a better view of that is right here so this is your V-slot wheel, and the profile of that wheel is the same as the profile of this rail. So it rides inside of that profile. That keeps this part staying where it's supposed to and allows it to only move in one direction, the direction you want it to. This is the X-axis carriage. It's a carriage that rides along the X-axis. This is your hot end bracket or shroud. So this allows all of your hot end components to come together. This would be your hot end cooling fan. This would be your parts cooling fan. I have an LED light on here. That doesn't matter for this discussion. This is your 
cooling block, your part of your hot end. This is a compression fitting that allows the Bowden tube to attach to the hot end. This is your heater block, and that pipe in the middle there, that shaft right in the middle there, that is your heat break. You see a hot end, you want to make sure that this part's hot, but this part is not hot. So the heat break makes it difficult for heat to transfer between these two halves. If you were to butt this heat block directly against the heat sink, then heat would directly transfer between the two. So the idea is that heat break limits the amount of heat that can transfer. Now, of course, there will be heat that does transfer, and that's what this fan's for. This fan is to keep the cold side of the hot end cold. Your nozzle is down here. Let me get the focus. Come on. Autofocus does not like doing this. There we go. You can see sets of wires here. There's two of them. The large red set is your heater cartridge. So there's a cylinder that runs through this block. You can see the end of it right there. Right there. See that little cylinder there? That's your heater cartridge. It's literally a heater. That's what makes this hot. And then next to it is your thermistor. That's literally a thermometer. So that runs back to the brain board, and the brain board can use the data it gets from that thermistor to tell how hot the hot end is. Your heat bed also has one. This particular heat bed is a PCB heat bed. So you can see these tracks like it's a circuit board. So this entire aluminum plate has heating elements throughout it. Those tracks you see are the heating elements. And then in the middle you see that little piece of tissue with capped on tape. Underneath that is your thermistor so that the printer will know what the temperature of the bed is. So when I tell it to set the temperature to 60 centigrade, it knows when it reaches centigrade and to start cycling the heat bed on and off to keep it at 60. Same thing with the hot end. The thermistor tells the brain board what the temperature of the heat block is. So if I tell it to go to 210 Celsius, it knows when it's reached 210 Celsius and can cycle on and off to keep the temperature where I told it to. This is part of the motion system for the x-axis. So this plate is so that they can have the end stop switch right here. And this plate here connects with the end stop switch so that it knows when x is at zero. Pulley drive, uh, a gear drive, I, I don't know, what, I actually don't know what you call that. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. I, I actually don't remember what you call that. Stepper motor for the x-axis, so each axis has a stepper motor. This is the stepper motor for the z-axis. This is your coupler, which couples the stepper motor to the lead screw. The lead screw is your motion system for the z-axis. That motion system engages this brass bushing here, this brass collar, and that is what allows this lead screw to drive this z-axis carriage up and down. In this particular printer, the z-axis carriage also carries the x-axis carriage with it up and down. So the x-axis moves up and down with the printer. I keep losing the autofocus. Now, this right here, these two components here, this, this cooling block with the heater block, this tube, and this piece right here, this is your extruder. The extruder is made up, in this case, of three parts. You have the Bowden tube, you have the hot end, and you have the feeder. The feeder is what drives the filament, feeds the filament into the printer. It comes in through this side. It gets pinched between this drive gear and this pulley gear, which keeps it straight, and you can see the filament inside there. There we go. So you can see the filament inside there. So this pulley just rolls, and this has teeth on it. You can see the teeth down there and drives the filament out the exit, down the bottom tube, into the hot end where it gets melted. This is your tensioner arm. You see it's spring-loaded. So when you squeeze this, it releases tension or increases tension with the spring. Now you don't want this too tight, because otherwise you'll actually pinch the filament and squish it. Sometimes you could pinch it so tight, the stepper motor is not strong enough to push it through, because it's too tight an opening. It's like trying to shove your finger in a hole that's too small. Well, if the hole gets too small, you can't get your finger through. Same thing happens here. This is your Bowden clip, and on this side, it uses a different style of um, fitting to secure the Bowden tube to the component. This side uses a, um, a compression fitting, and this is just a different kind of compression fitting. 
I actually like this. It's pretty reliable. So far, I have had zero issues and zero play with that. This little clip here, your Bowden clip, takes up the slack. You have different kinds of feeder units. So this is a one-sided unit. So this side is driven and this side is free spinning. You also have um, dual drive units where both sides are geared, meaning they have teeth. And then they physically connect at the bottom with a gear system so that you are actually driving both wheels, kind of like four-wheel drive. And that's advantageous for greater torque, better grip on the filament, and also even distribution of force as it pushes the filament through. Up top here we have our spool holder which holds the spool of filament. And then this surface here, not the whole thing, but just the actual surface that you're printing on is called your build surface. In this case I'm using what's called, what we call affectionately, fake tack. Because the original creator, I believe, of this style build surface was build tack. And this is basically a copy of build tack, so we call it fake tack. But you also have PEI, PEX, glass. You have that sodium, uh, silicon dioxide surface. It's like um, a black dotted surface on glass. There's a bunch of different surfaces. You can print on glue, hairspray. That would be your build surface. You can print on masking tape. You can print on Kapton tape. You can print on Garolite. These are all different build surfaces that some people are more or less comfortable with or depending on what kind of filament you're printing with. I, for example, prefer this fake tack build tack style surface because while heat helps, heat's not required, which means I can turn off the heater. I leave the heater on in the beginning, but as the print progresses, I turn the heat bed off. And because of the type of surface this is, it does not release when it cools down, which means I can save power. When you're running 10 or 15 printers, it actually adds up to quite a lot of power. You run one printer, you're not even going to see it on your electric bill. It might be 6 to 12 bucks on your electric bill a month if you ran it 24-7. Run 10, 15, 20 of those with giant heat beds, and that's suddenly a lot of power. This is your LCD interface. So this is the user interface between you and the printer. Feed rate is the rate at which you feed the code the G code that you use on your SD card to the printer. So when you increase the feed rate, your print goes faster, but everything goes faster or slower. So if you notice your print's going a little too fast and it's not sticking right, you can slow it down. Or if you notice that, you know, something this printer can handle a little more, I want to get this print done, you know, a couple minutes faster, maybe you can increase it a little bit. Be careful, if you go too fast, you run into problems. Um, on this particular printer, and a lot of them, they show you the X, Y, coordinate, Z coordinates of where the print is. Not that useful, this usually lags behind where the printer actually is. Up top here, it is telling us the hot end temperature, heat bed temperature, and the fan status. So the fan is currently off. That's this fan. This fan is always on. On some printers, this fan is thermally controlled. There's a thermocouple inside or a programming that when the temperature goes past a certain amount turn the fan on most printers it's just always on so here you can see the target temperature is zero and in this case zero means off so it's not actually trying to reach zero degrees celsius zero just means off in this case and the current temperature is 26 and 27 degrees celsius sometimes you'll have a logo or a name here it doesn't mean a whole lot and then here you'll have your current print time and this is a progress indicator showing you how much of the print you've finished. This will give you the status of what it's currently doing. So it says Ender 3D ready. When it's printing, it'll say printing. If it's heating up, it'll say heating. Some printers will also show you a percentage complete as well. Mine just has a progress bar here, but some you'll have an actual number. And on some machines, you'll even have a remaining time. So you'll have a, a rough approximation of how much time you have left. That is your LCD interface. The encoder wheel has two functions. You can turn which allows you to change variables on the screen. You can also depress to select. In this case, we bring up a menu. So prepare would be things like heating up, moving the access, control would be controlling individual things. Um, you'll have to go, this is gonna be all be different for whatever printer you're using. Um, and I'm adjusting the encoder knob to change position. In this case, I have no SD card, but otherwise this would say, um, you know, SD card, and I can select that to then pick what file I wish to print. basically it. I have individual videos on how to 
do bed leveling, for example, on how to adjust motion system, guidance system, um, coupling, where you want to be careful not to have them too coupled, on how to rebuild the hot end, on how to adjust these wheels. So you want these to be snug so that nothing wiggles, but not too tight. If any of these components wobbles, then you need to adjust these wheels. They have what's called an eccentric nut. So how do I show you this? So you see there's a spacer between the roller wheel and the frame of the carriage. Some of those spacers on this particular machine, it'll be this wheel here, this wheel here, and on this machine, it'll be this wheel here because it's the one wheel versus the two. They will be eccentric. What that means is the hole that the wheel sits in is oblong instead of round. By make, well, the, the hole isn't oblong. The cut in the spacer is oblong. So instead of having a hole directly in the center, that hole is offset, which creates an oval path. That means as you turn the wheel, as you turn the wrench on the spacer, it will actually move the wheel either slightly further away or slightly further closer to the rail, which will allow you to adjust the tightness. I have an entire video on adjusting that. I believe those are the basics. The metal here is called extrusions. So these are aluminum extrusions and they are named by their dimensions. So for example, this one here is 20 by 20 millimeters. So this is called a 2020 extrusion. This is 20 by 40. So this is called a 2040 extrusion. This printer has some acrylic components. So this base plate and this housing are made of acrylic instead of metal. They don't need to be, they're non-structural. The miscellaneous wiring you see around here is called your wiring harnesses. So this wiring harness goes from the brain board to the hot end. So this includes power for the heater cartridge, thermistor for the heater, power for the fans, etc. And in my case, power for the LED. Uh, I believe these are called, I think these are called Mollux connectors. It's just the name of the type of plug this is. So this contains the four wires that run to the stepper boot. And you'll also have similar wires that run to the end stop switches. Well, there you go. I think I got everything. I'm probably missing some things. I'm creating these videos to create a database online for easy access. So if you go to www.nurice.com, that's Nancy Echo Romeo Yankee Sam .com, um, I have links to all of my sites there. So if you want to subscribe to any of my other channels or check out some of my um, shopping links, I have them there. But I also have a 3D printing basics link there with a description of each of my 3D printing basics video and a link directly to those videos. So you can just go to nurice.com, click on 3DP basics and have access to all of my 3D printing basics videos there. If you have any questions, ask down below. If I made any mistakes, by all means, let me know. In the future, I'll make another video and I'll replace the link and I'll refine it as I get better and better. And that's it. You have a great day.